Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Sovereign Society podcast. I know it's been a minute since you've heard my voice and another person's voice, but I got Ruby Freeman here and I'm so pumped because, you know, this whole journey that I've been navigating through of losing my memory and like being in and out of doctor's appointments, having my brain checked, all this shit, like the best thing that I've been really reevaluating, taking time away is like, who are the true leaders out there? Like, who are people who are actually shaking shit up and revolutionizing the world with their medicine? And this bitch is one of them. Like, I am so happy Ruby is here because, I mean, I know, I don't know about you all, but I've been craving more authenticity. I've been craving more realness in the world. And I think so many of us have been really navigating through, like, this life. I mean, of course, no one has a manual. Of course, we could share each other's wisdom and inspiration and learn from previous generations and whatnot, but we're all doing our best here. And I have compassion for that. And I have compassion for those who are willing to be brave and are willing to answer the call and live out their dharma and speak up and going against the grain and really against the, uh, I don't want to necessarily say brainwashing, but let's just say the conditional beliefs and uh, narrative that's happening. And more than that, like my biggest prayer is that people step into their sovereign embodiment and in their truth, which means freedom, liberation. It's the It is moksha. It is the liberation from suffering. And if we are constantly living in this fear, constantly living in this box, there is no liberation. There is no freedom. There is no sovereignty in our reality. And so shout out to my girl Ruby here for actually, you know, answering the call and being like, I'm not playing small. I refuse to play small. I'm here to implement change. I'm here because I'm here on purpose. I'm here on mission. I'm here to do God's work, to live out my divine purpose and truth. So I just needed to share that and do like a hype man kind of intro for Ruby because (laughs) I'm just so proud and I'm just really inspired by this woman so much. Wow. That has to be hands down the best intro I have ever received on a podcast ever. And I feel like I just want to pack you up and put you in my pocket and keep you as my hype woman for life. Like when I wake up in the morning, there's Sabrina. She's going to hype me up. When I come out of the shower, there's Sabrina. She's going to hype me up when I come out. Like, I just, can I have that all the time? please? (laughs) Well, just play this episode on repeat. Okay. Have this for your morning. I might just do that. I love it. No, but I've like, I've been following Ruby for years and I met her before this whole shit storm went down in Palm Springs through our buddy, Brett, Brett Jones. And he's another one that's really shaking shit up, speaking up and being censored for, for sharing his truth, but he's not giving up and neither is Ruby. And I think that's the test we're in right now. You know, like we came here during this time for this, you know, it's like, I think, and I would love your, your response on this, you know, come 2012, maybe a little bit before everyone's like starting to get their feet into the spiritual movement and what it means to be spiritual and this ritual or this crystal or this practice. And then it's delivered to us on a, this, I wouldn't say a silver platter. It's definitely like a corroded platter, (laughs) like what we're navigating through, but it's like, okay, cool. How are you implementing what you actually have been learning versus just like what will sell or like Mm -hmm. what everyone else is doing? Like, are you actually embodying the teachings and the wisdom and the medicine you've been sharing on social media? Mm-hmm. And that's what's missing, right? Is the integrity. We're, yes. we're lacking integrity in in our world as a whole, in humanity as a whole, and especially in the spiritual, personal development, entrepreneurship industries. Like it's like the the invention of digital media technology, social media has made it really easy for people to lie, manipulate, mask, and 
what happens is people's psyche gets involved. Their egos mm-hmm. get involved. They get really wrapped up and hyper-focused on the wrong things. You know, their egos get wrapped up in, well, look at me, like me. And then that starts to show up in their leadership and, and their presence and their energy. And so all these things, like we're, I'm, I'm sure you're like me, like we're not saying crystals are bad. We're not saying like all these things are bad, but it's like, are you using these things with intention? Mm-hmm. Like, are you actually being present in the work that you're doing? Or are you just showing up and filming your, a, a, yourself dancing in a reel and calling it embodiment? And then going back and sitting on the couch, eating chips, watching fucking Netflix and not doing any inner work at all. You know what I mean? I'm like, dead. also I'm not dogging it. I'm not dogging Netflix either. I actually really like Netflix because I'm a projector and I need to zone out at the end of the day, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like, yep. where's the congruence um, there? It's so easy to learn something and regurgitate it. What's hard is to like learn something take the time to really integrate it, uh, meaning, and I don't want to just be one of those people that throws words around. So what does integration mean? It means like bringing it into your daily life, your daily practice, your daily being. It's like, you it's, learn- a, it's your, it's your resonance. Yeah. But that can also be a word for people. It's like, what does that actually mean? It's like, how are you taking all these tools that you're learning? How are you taking all this knowledge, all this wisdom that you're obtaining and bringing it into your life, bringing it into your soma, bringing it into your body. Are you actually putting things into like a ritualistic practice? Or are you just doing things to check off a to-do list on the box to say that, yep, I meditated. Yep. I did breath work. Look at me. Look how enlightened I am. Mm-hmm. No, fuck that shit. Louder for the people in the back. I hear you. Fuck that shit. (laughs) Well, this is fun. I'm already having fun. Um, Yeah, I mean, and it's a great, and if you are doing that, no shame, right? It's like, okay, cool. Can you become aware of that? And from that awareness, can you do better? Mm -hmm. Right? And I think, you know, it's interesting since, like I said, this is, you're my first guest and we were chatting before, but like, since my last big episode where I was hospitalized, actually the one that happened during Lionsgate. Yes. When I was hospitalized, when I came out, I felt like I'm seeing this world with a whole new lens. Like, I feel like I pierced through a veil of like this cloud and, you know, granted, like we're recording this just days before my nine year anniversary of being struck by lightning, which is like nine is the number of completion. And I was talking to a friend earlier today and she was like, you have more insights because she was like, I was watching this X-Files episode, Marina Feeney, she was on my podcast. She was like, I was watching this X-Files episode and Jack Black was in it and he was struck by lightning and he had more insights of what's going on. And that's what I feel like I'm navigating through is with this awareness and recognizing, and this may be another like buzzword or whatever, I'm just going to say it. We're all on various timelines. And from my recent episode, I've seen how I've been dropping out these timelines, meaning timelines of seeing or navigating through this world, through scarcity, through fear, uh, through intimidation of being intimidated by the world outside of me. And I've realized, like, like I said, that's not part of like the organic timeline of like my truth. And speaking of organic timelines, you know, there's so much conversation about living organically and I'm not just talking about the food we eat but like our true birthright or the true path that like the divine the universe spirit god whatever lexicon you want to use has set out for us and of course we can you know navigate through and we can have our ebbs and flows and challenges and there can be darker entities that are trying to come through as well and I feel like I've been purging out a lot of that but I think now that I've gotten through the other side of that I'm seeing with clear eyes how it's infiltrated the community and the collective at large as well. And it's interesting because, you know, so much, uh, you know, like you were talking about earlier, like we're in like so much social media and like constant uh, news and uh, information. And we're not, how do we navigate through that with discernment one and two, how do we recognize that like these darker forces have taken over those spaces for more control? And it's interesting because I was thinking today, you know, a lot about like 
early childhood conditioning, right? And I think so many like generation wires, millennials, and even probably a little bit of like the late uh, or like the early millennials, like we grew up as children with beanie babies. And uh, I'm, this is a really interesting thing, but <laughs> I was watching uh, last night when I couldn't sleep, like the dark side of the nineties. And I was talking about beanie baby, like mania in the late nineties and or into the early two thousands. And I saw and I thought about how much we were programmed about scarcity at a young age, because those Beanie Babies were retiring after three months. So our parents went out to like Hallmark stores and small mom and pop shops to buy Beanie Babies before they sold, thinking that like, hey, we're going to invest in this. So someday we can sell them for thousands of dollars and pay for my college fund. At a young age, we were taught about capitalism and scarcity. Mm -hmm. through toys so we saw how there was like a darker like how there was greed that took over and ingrained at a young formative age these children who would then go to fast food to get these beanie babies which would be full of processed shit but just like if you can start seeing the hawk perspective of the bigger bigger agendas that are happening in our world, in our collective, and where is that money, whose pocket is it going to? Like this whole pandemic, there are now five new billionaires because of this new pandemic. But that's the thing is like, people are so wrapped, like zoomed in on, on this present moment, this present minute, minute that they're, it's like they're unable to zoom out and look at the bigger picture here. And I love that you use the word hawk perspective. Actually, my 40th birthday gift to myself is a giant hawk tattoo. So that'll be Ooh, confirmation. Yeah. I love and that. I love it too. But that's what we're missing is perspective. Mm -hmm. And a perspective on in all ways. Yes to the programming. I think a lot of people, I want to start here. Yes. A lot of people are feeling like this kind of came out of nowhere. And I want to emphasize this has not, it's been brewing for generations. Like for generations, humans have been primed for this moment in time. We've been primed. And so the priming, the program of priming started not with us. It started with our parents, with our grandparents, with our great grandparents, priming them to be in this weird kind of like, I hate using the word zombie like your sheep. I don't like using those kind of terms, but there's like an autopilot and a and an automatic trust for those in in pow in quote unquote power or those in positions of authority. And what's interesting is a lot of people don't see that. And then on the other hand, when you have this like automatic trust for someone in authority you also st at the same time dismiss your own inner authority. Like this person knows better because they're in a position authority. I don't know better. I don't know what's best for myself. I don't know. And right now, the way that I'm looking at it is this is a reclamation for us to reclaim our power, to reclaim our sovereignty. And that's why a lot of us are experiencing these weird glitches in the timelines and a lot of stuff coming to the surface. Like a lot of us have been going through our, a version of a, a dark night this year, even though we've already gone through it. You know, I went through my second dark night of the soul this year, and I didn't think I would ever go through that again. And I did, and it hit me out of nowhere. And the more I started talking about it, the more I realized other people were also experiencing the same. And it is, it's this like dissolution meant as well as like the crumbling of the timelines, as well as like everything you've learned up until now could be false. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with that information? And it, it, it's a return. The way I look at it, it's a return to our center. It's a return to the earth. It's a return to uh, being sovereign beings and reclaiming our own internal authority. That is what's at hand right now. And that goes hand in hand with leadership, because if the leaders, the people who are showing up right now and claiming the title of leader are not actually standing as sovereign beings and are just doing what everyone else is doing just for optics, then those are not the people we need to be following, right? The, the people who are telling you what to do, that's just another form of authority. That's just another way for you to go to somewhere else to find what it is that you're looking for 
versus all the answers we need and all the work we need to do is within it's deep within. And if I believe so strongly, if every single person on the planet right now, just devoted themselves to their inner work, right. We'd be in a far better state than we are right now. Amen. And I think part of that inner work on awareness of that is also knowing that, you know, there's, it looks different for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think what you were talking about when it's like, this has been going on for generations is because it's still brewing up because it hasn't been fully alchemized, healed, transmuted, released. So it's part of, there's still like, I don't want to even say it's a golden thread because it's not gold, but there's still this thread that is connected from generations and we're seeing these patterns, right? It's, it's a cycle. It's a pattern. It's a loop. That's why I'm very passionate about alchemizing loops because it will just keep you on that hamster wheel. And I think as humanity, that's what we're experiencing. We see this every like 20 years or so, you know, like 20 years ago, 9-11 happened. And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That's coming up. You've got like what the Berlin wall happened, not, you know, was the big one that happened right before that as well. And it's just like, these are cyclical things that are happening because collectively we still haven't mastered it. We haven't become aware of it. And I think that's part of our generation too, because we're the last generation of that millennia. Mm -hmm. So we're still fairly new into this millennia. 21 years is like a very, very small, like 1%, you know, or 2% of like the thousand years that we're navigating through. So it's, it's having the courage now to be aware of that. And from that awareness, how can you begin to implement change? Great. We have social media. We have the internet where we can spread our information and share our wisdom and our medicine and touch the lives around the world of people we may never have met before. Mm -hmm. And we, each of us carry wisdom that is the answer to someone's prayer. And I, that like came through when I was like working with some clients uh, a couple weeks ago. And it's, it's like, it was just duh. Like you, the things that you've navigated through, there's wisdom, the challenges you've endured and you've conquered that's an initiation and wisdom of stories you're going to be able to tell down the line of, I don't even like what, I don't even want to say what to do or what not to do, but again, just an awareness and having that, that medicine be shared and passed down. I feel like this is how we're implementing this change. And it's, I mean, of course it's challenging because so many people are having so many different perspectives of what's going on in the world. And it's just like, how many have actually been devoted to, again, their sovereignty? How many have actually been devoted to like the truth with a capital T? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Versus just seeking out the answers through those in positions of quote unquote authority right again taking away from the inner authority and for you know you bring up you brought up such a good point with social media for example like spreading your message spreading your medicine and in addition to that like actually being on the ground and doing something and so this doesn't mean uh let me backtrack here i think there's a lot of people right now performing like there's a lot of social justice performers. There's a lot of justice performers. There's a lot of freedom performers. There's a lot of fucking performers right now. And a performer is someone who shows up on their, you know, in their online space, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, whatever, says what they think the world needs to hear right now. Mo you know, usually from with good intentions, but then aren't actually doing anything about it and aren't actually embodying the change that they want to see for the world, you know? And then there's the actual warriors, you know, the warrior leaders who are sharing their medicine through the digital space, as well as weaving their medicine in the physical space, you know? And I think it's a combination of, of three things. One, we need to weave our medicine within ourselves, like really reclaim our medicine. Two, we need to weave our medicine in our work and in our leadership and in this 3D 
space that we all live in. And then three, we need to weave that medicine into the digital space because right now it's like an amazing space for us to connect with one another and unite because there's shit going on, for example, in Australia that is never reported in the news. But the only reason we know about it is because of what people are sharing online. Mm -hmm. there, there's shit, you know, and we need to be able to connect. And I feel like, you know, this, this week I was feeling a real sadness and I started looking into what that was and I gave myself space for that. And I realized it was like, I, I'm not, I'm not like super sad about all this stuff that's happening in the world with our health and all that. What makes me sad is the division mm -hmm. is the way that we're being used as tools to, to fight against each other. And this goes for everyone on all sides of the equation. Like people on all sides are showing up like complete fucking ignorant assholes and it's not working. It's not supporting humanity right now. And it's a I divide and conquer it, uh, completely. But it's like, when has hate ever won while fi like fighting hate against hate? When has that ever worked? You know, where no one is listening to each other. Uh, there's people on like, if you want to talk about sides, there's people who believe things like we do and all they're doing is sharing memes. And I'm just like, but what are you actually doing? Like, you're literally just making fun of people who believe different. You're not initiating or creating a, a environment to have these types of discussions. And if people aren't ready to have a compassionate, conscious discussion about something, cool. They're just not there yet but we need to embody the vision that we have for humanity. Otherwise we're just as bad as the rest of them, all the people that we're hating on. You know well, what Claire, I mean? It's, like, a, it's, a, it's a new form of segregation. hundred percent. Like people who say, when I ever, whenever I say like, this is the Holocaust all over again, mm -hmm. people get livid. And then I'll go through the steps, you know, like, the propaganda, the, let's label someone as the enemy. Let's label someone as dirty right? That's what they did in the Holocaust. And then we'll label the unmasked and the unvaxxed as dirty, right? Just like they did with politics. The red are dirty. They, they have they, this way of creating labels. And, and then we as human beings like cling onto those labels. Like, yes, I am this. And I think right now the invitation is really to like, how about we just drop the fucking labels mm -hmm. for a minute? Because well, that's, that's part, that's part of the distortions, right? It's yes. like, that's the box. It's like, okay, because I'm associate with this label, it means I have to behave in this way. 100%. And it's, it's really interesting because I was like this close, this close to becoming a Holocaust studies minor when I was in college. And I remember when I went to the Holocaust uh, museum, when I was in middle school, I didn't want to leave. Mm. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave. I loved reading about Anne Frank. I didn't want to leave. And I was so pissed because one time in college, I had the opportunity to see Ellie Wiesel and I missed it. And I like night was one of my favorite books I read. And it's, it's, it's fascinating. You said that because I've been reflecting a lot in my healing journey, you know, with my brain and what's going on lately. And I've just been putting the pieces together of the things that actually sparked interest to me at a young age. Mm-hmm. And how it's playing out again of that wisdom I've learned then of like, okay, from that awareness, how can I choose accordingly? Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a lot of these patterns and I'm just like observing again, Hawk perspective. I live by that. And I'm a dot connector. I'm a strategist is what I do. And I've realized during this whole, you know, hiatus I've been going through and health shit, like. I truly am a strategist. That's why I studied marketing. It's why I went to school on this thing. It's like, I want, I'm seeing how these doc connects. I just, I, speaking of memes, I think of that meme of Charlie from, <laughs> uh, it's always study in Philadelphia where he's always like, ah, and he's got all these like lines and like a map and he's like losing his mind. That's what if I feel like sometimes, cause I'm seeing how all of these are interconnected. For instance, uh, there's some places like I live in Palm Springs there's with like, I don't even know if I can necessarily say these words because I've like a censorship, but you need to, you need to show that you've, you've got the V or that you've had a 72 hour test to even go into a coffee shop. 
Wow. And I understand because there's also a lot of the population. It's a very strong LGBTQ community that had a lot of people die of AIDS. And so there's still a lot of this fear Mm -hmm. and pain that's been unprocessed or really looked at. And somehow, I'm not saying to everyone, but I'm saying there's still that like, uh, there's still that, that fog or that daze and that like, that smoke, I guess, that hasn't really been cleared out that still needs to be addressed and healed. And again, these are deeper opportunities for us to look at the root of the fear, the root of the trauma, the root of the pain. That's why I brought up Beanie Babies, right? Like it's it's going back to these programs and conditions and pain that's been unresolved or brushed aside And I'm like, for instance, I'm grateful right now that we're living in a time where mental health is being spoke about. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes shitty situations like this for people to wake the fuck up and to start having real conversation. But conversation means listening. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not just talking. It's listening, creating your own, uh, not even say belief, but like having your own share and like your own insights and really reflecting on what other people are saying because that's how we grow there isn't this box this label of like well this is how everyone else is in this community so this is how i need to be no where is the individuality where is the sovereignty where is your truth and again that's what i feel like the bigger gift of all this has been. Of course, it's been a fucking challenging two years or so, but people are recognizing more the importance of speaking their truth and using their voice. And it's not like some of these people who don't believe that you need to show a card to get into places. Like there's people who aren't completely anti, you know, they're anti the totalitarianism and Mm -hmm. the control that these governments are trying to take over to keep people small because if they control the people Mm -hmm. then they have control over them and they can't be controlled or uh told that they're doing wrong so Mm -hmm. that's my take on it of what's happening um Because again, I believe that everyone has their choice to your body, your choice, and becoming aware of the deeper agendas that are going on. What is the fear? Where is the division? Where is the segregation? And from that awareness, how are we using our social media platforms to speak up, implement change, and really look out for not just the generations to come, but even in our life now? not even just like future, but like in this now moment. Mm -hmm. So, so important and so well said. And I think in addition to that too, um, evolving our work as we continue to evolve and awaken, Mm -hmm. right? We are constantly evolving. We are, that's like the one purpose that every human being has uh, in common is that we are here to evolve and we evolve until we die. And then even then we're evolving. If we're buried, we're evolving in the soil and becoming the earth. So evolution is the only constant. And as we evolve and right now we're seeing a rapid acceleration in our evolution, both in the external world and in our internal worlds and paradigms, um, to take that and, and, and merge that into the work that we're doing, you know, how can we take the work that we're doing today and really have it feel more aligned for where humanity is right now. And I know that I've been feeling this a lot over the past year because things are different. People have, um, are, are, they have different needs right now. Like the needs that people had once before this all started, they've shifted because again, like we're all evolving. And so and this is about how can you serve your medicine in a way that feels fully aligned with the times that we're living to to best serve humanity where we're at as a collective, right? And I think that that's a really important thing to consider for those of you who are in a space of servitude, who are serving clients, 
It's like, how can you better serve humanity at this time? How can you better serve yourself? How can you better serve your clients? How can you better serve your audience and your community and the people around you? And perhaps this also means shifting your audience, shifting the people around you, shifting the clients that you work with, right? To create or to cultivate a deeper alignment. Um, there's definitely like just me personally, I've been feeling such a, I, I've always been one to love things feeling aligned. I love it when things feel aligned, when things don't feel aligned, I'm like, fuck this. I need to change something. But now more than ever, I'm like, if something is misaligned, I am done. I have no patience. This is not working. It needs to go. And that includes people, things, experiences, stuff like all of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of us are feeling that however, um, not enough of us are taking action on it because it takes courage sometimes to let go of people, to let go of things, to let it's go of It's a mourning offers. process. It's a, oh it's a mourning it's a process. Grieving. It's a grieving yeah. process that you navigate through. 100%. And it's, you know, it's, it's also part of life. Like, yes, people come in your life for a reason, for a season or for a lifetime. We were aware of that. And like you said, I, we're, we've all shifted in the last two years because we've, we've had a disruption in the patterning and the way that we were doing things for however long that it was like changing gears. And from that, there was also an ability and opportunity for a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, because, and that's the opportunity that we get to take, but it's like so many people are not seeing that as an opportunity, you know, it's so much safer to stay the same that that's what we tell ourselves. That's the story. A condition. <laughs> right. Exactly. But it's not, it's not, it's actually super fucking disruptive to stay the same. It, you're going against evolution, right? You're creating more resistance in your life. You're creating more, more, um, difficulties in your life and, you're being asked to evolve. You're being asked to create space. Like me and you were just talking about this. You're being asked to create that space. You're being asked to drop deeper into yourself. You're being asked to move at a slower pace right now and with more intentionality. Like that's super important too. Like, can we be super fucking hyper intentional with everything that we're doing? And we're well, right you, it's harder to do that if you're not slowing down because no. you're in your mind all the time and you're in this mm -hmm. go, 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 but it's like that slowing down is that cultivating of breath between moments and choices and spaciousness that allows also to receive. Right. And right? that's the other program though, right? Like don't slow down. Hustling is how we get shit done. And it's like slowing down is for quitters, whatever the fuck the story is that you're carrying. And it's not, there's so much. And I'm saying this to, as someone who's speaking from experience, I was like super fucking type A, like hustle, 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 go, go, go. I've been an entrepreneur for like 19 years now. I've had several businesses. I, I've just always been that person until 2018 when my soul was like, you're fucking done. And since 2018, it's just been this, like, how much more can you slow down? How much more can you surrender? How much slower can you go? And it's been really fucking annoying. I'll be honest. Like, it's been annoying <laughs> to like, what God, what do you want me to surrender now? Like, I feel, yes. so, I feel like a pile of mush, but it's also been like the biggest gift that I can give myself as well as the biggest gift that I can give to the people I work with, to, to my work, to my book. Like, it's just been such potent medicine for me to slow down and be hyper intentional with everything. And, uh, it's allowed me to drop even deeper into who I am, into my potency, into my, into everything. And if we can get over that fear of slowing down, of taking a pause, even like, God forbid you pause, but taking a pause, right. If we can get over that fear, like what would really happen if you slowed down? What would really happen if you paused and gave yourself some space and gave yourself some time to just be with yourself? What would happen, you know? And I think that right now, um, I was just talking about this with a few friends. There's like a collective fear. If you, if you drop into each fear and like keep going, like, and then what, and then what, and then what? It's like the, the ultimate baseline fear here is the fear of death. Like mm. a lot of people are fearing death right now and super unconscious to it. Some people are conscious of it. They're like, I don't want to die from this V. Um, and some people are just not conscious of it, but there's a fear of death. And 
uh, it's important for us to understand that death is part of our life cycle and that we get to embrace that. You know, it was funny because like when I was 18 years old, 18, I think, um, my grandmother passed away and I was really close with her and she had psychic gifts that were never spoken of. And the day she passed, I actually knew she was passing. And the day before she passed, I knew she was going to pass the next day. I freaked out. My family thought I was crazy. And then the day she she passed the next day. And after that, because it felt really traumatizing to lose her, I was like, I don't know what it was at 18 years old, but I, I said, I need to like befriend death. Mm -hmm. And so I took a program to become a um, certified um, hospice care worker because I wanted to immerse myself in, in that environment. And when I started working my volunteer hours in hospice, what I saw wasn't sadness or grief. It was beauty and reverence, reverence and gratitude. You know, I would sit with the patients and read stories or just have conversations. A lot of them didn't even have family that would visit and we would just talk and there would be so much joy in their eyes, knowing that they were being seen, they were being heard, they were being acknowledged and they would just share their life stories. And it's like, the, death is the celebration at the end of our life in this lifetime. You know, it's also the gateway into the next lifetime. And yet here we are all in this 3D world, scrambling around fearing death when death is inevitable. And when I, you start to really understand that, you start to embrace the cycles in life. You know why people are afraid of death is because they didn't make the most of their life. Right. But that's the thing. You're, you're living your life so fixated on the fear of death that you're not living in your life. Exactly. Right. Whereas if you started living in your life and following the things that really bring you joy and being yourself, giving yourself the permission to fucking just be who you be and live your life to the fullest, whatever that looks like, right. Mm -hmm. Then you won't fear it. Right. You know? Yeah, I do. I mean, I've been around death since I was three years old and, um, my cousin died when uh, she was two and I was three of leukemia. So my early childhood memories are like being in Raddy's Children's Hospital in San Diego and, you know, losing my best friend. And I had, a, I've had a lot of death throughout my life. And my last episode I had in um, August during the Lionsgate happened on the anniversary of my grandmother's death. Mm. And uh, when she was dying, when she was dying in 2015, she did 10 days, no food, no water. I actually have a tattoo on my arm that I got after she died that said, without suffering, there would be no compassion. Mm. And when she was dying again, during that Lionsgate portal, I almost got struck by lightning again. And I had to like take off all my metal and like run across the street to my parents' house from my grandma's house to like get home while lightning's hitting the backyard and everything. Wow. And you know, there's, of course, I mean, death is, it's, it's a, it's a, there's a grieving process to it. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a lot of it. Like, I wish I would have said this to them or like, you know, I miss their presence, but what we have to understand as well is that when we die, what lives on is the soul and the subtle body. So um, that's like my favorite thing from Kundalini yoga is tantric numerology. And of the 10 bodies, the ninth body is the subtle body. So the subtle body and the soul living on uh, the subtle body is like, Hey, when a song is playing and it reminds you of someone that means their subtle body is present, whether dead or alive. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like you see like a, like a sign or a picture and you think of that person, like their subtle body is with you. And I think, again, if we can start to have more of the awareness of these pieces of what's possible, and I think with all of this unfolding in the year 2020, I was calling it 2020 crystal vision, this whole experience we've been navigating through as a collective is for us to open our eyes to what's actually important in this life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think part of that is understanding, like part of that importance is making the most of it, speaking your truth, like living it up to its fullest, uh, connecting and sharing and creating a life based on your terms. Like that's, that's the veil we're here. It appears to recognize and really witness. And 
this is our time to, to tap in and activate our true fullest embodied human potential. A hundred percent. It's it, it, that's exactly what I've been feeling is like, even for me, when I had my dark night of the soul earlier this year, it was, you know, it's basically when you go through that, it's a dissolution of everything that you once held meaning in and uh, creating space for something new to emerge. And for me, what I found was it really put me this last, these last two years have really put me face to face with what truly feels meaningful to me. What is it that I hold most sacred in my life? You know, who do I hold most sacred in my life? And all of that has, has encouraged me to change a lot of different aspects of my life. You know, how much time I spend with people, who I spend time with, how I show up in my home, how I show up for my work, how I show up for myself, um, the conversations I have, the tonality in which I have those conversations. Uh, and, and it's important for us to understand because for each person, this can be different. Like what you hold most meaningful in your life is gonna be different than what I hold most meaningful. But what's important is that you honor those things as, as, as sacred things in your life, like things that you get to hold most sacred, you know, things that you get to take a stand for, things that you get to show up for. Uh, that's what's important. And it's like we, humanity for far too long, like our society has been living on like frivolous shit. You know, like we've been living in autopilot. We've been prioritizing the stupidest shit. We've been, you know, very uh, living in a very materialized world. Um, we've lost all sense of like family and tribe and communion and unity and connection. And I see this as a return uh, again to the earth, like a return to our, the ways of our indigenous ancestors. Uh, you know, can we all just sit around a fire and unite? Can, can we just be the medicine for ourselves and for each other, you know? And this is what I feel is being called forth right now if we so choose to see it. I mean, hell yeah. I mean, like I said, when I got out of the hospital and that's what I saw, I like really saw like, wow, I'm, I'm truly a spiritual being having a human experience. Like mm -hmm. I'm seeing the humanness of this and like, what a wild fucking place we've all co-created together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> what a wild place we've all co-created together. And from that, it's like, like you said, like, where can we understand that each of us are, are bringing, we're all a fragment of the bigger picture and we're all contributing in some way or another through our experiences, through what lights us up, through what's made us who we are. And the sooner we give ourselves permission to release the shame, the guilt, uh, the grief, the pain, the anger. And of course, there's, there's a purpose for all of that, but that doesn't need to be the, it's, it's, a, it's a timely thing, right? Like mm -hmm. we don't need to be so engulfed by it, like be aware of it, but know that it's just, it's part of a journey to, again, bring in more compassion, to bring in more awareness, to bring in more wisdom, but it's not who you are. Yeah. It's yeah. fragments, it's pieces of who you are, but the bigger picture of who you are is more than just those pieces and those elements, that fear, that conditioning, that, uh, that box, that label. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well said. And, um, again, Hawk perspective, <laughs> like you've been saying, like zoom out a little bit mm -hmm. and, and, it, it's such a good time right now. It's such a good time right now. The, the most divine time to reassess everything, you know, like mm -hmm. reassess everything, who you be, how you're showing up, your relationships, your connections, your work, your, how you're serving, um, how you're showing up. Like this is the most divine time to reassess um, so that you can drop into a greater state of alignment um, and, and, there's, it, it, I just, you know, for me, I took a break, um, which is risky as an entrepreneur, right? It always comes with a risk. Like, you know, you're going to take a break from work. I needed to take a break from work. One, I need to finish my book, but two, I was just like, the world's events are fucking me up and I need to figure out where I'm at first. Like there was a call to really drop even deeper into myself 
before I can go out there and serve again. And so I took that time for myself and it ended up being like eight months. And I'm not saying everyone has to take eight months off. I mean, just do you, you know, like just do whatever feels right. But during that time, I went through my dark night. I reassessed everything in my life. I reevaluated everything. I made a lot of shifts in just how I was taking care of myself in the way that I was operating my business and who I really want to serve and, and really refining my messaging and, and who I am as a leader, uh, what I'm willing to stand for and what I'm really willing to not stand for. Just getting really clear on, on all of that so that upon my return, I can be fully embodied and fully expressed in my truth and in my sovereignty. And I'm so happy I did that for myself, despite the fear of, you know, the scarcity and the fear and like, oh my God, my business is going to die. It's like, despite all of that, no, you're going to thrive mm. if you do this for yourself, you know? And again, like if your business dies, maybe it, it was meant to die. Maybe there's a rebirth that is emerging that needs to come out, you know? And, and like we were saying earlier, like death is part of the cyclical process of life. Mm -hmm. We need to honor that. Yes. You've used all of my like main words to describe <laughs> like what I'm going through. I yeah. had a quote, my course thrive was all about that deeper is all, is all about the deeper healing and understanding to become into that sovereign embodiment. My book that I thought was done this whole thing happened. Obviously the book isn't done. So my book is called alignment is the true hustle. Mm -hmm. And these are all the things that we have to understand too. Again, I think there is so much of that pressure and it's, it's a huge piece of my own healing journey of what I've had to navigate through is like, I know I need to take time for myself because I've put mm -hmm. so much of my, my energy, my blood, sweat, and tears. I'm a projector as well into being of service. I'm seeing what's going on in the world. I'm like, gosh, I just want to like help. Mm -hmm. And I need to know that like, I also need to help me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's, I haven't really been 2021. I've had such an array of back and forth with doctor's appointments and MRIs, brain scans, spec scans, hospital visits, ambulance visits, like all these things. But it's like, I too need to understand to slow the fuck down. And these are things that sometimes, you know, like it's all part of a, a deeper plan and a divine plan. And I'm sure from that situation, when you took that eight months out, you came back stronger and more embodied and more you than before. Definitely. I mean, I came back more me and more embodied. And uh, I actually came back, funny enough, without a plan, which mm -hmm. is very new for me to not have a plan. But the more that I stay present in, in who I'm being in this moment and what's most meaningful to me in this moment, the more the path started to create itself, you know? And so maybe now I'm not trying to plan six months ahead of time or a year ahead of time like I always used to with my business. Now I'm literally planning like a month at a time, sometimes a week at a time. Um, but it's not even planning. It's just like seeing what feels good, feeling into what feels good, understanding what resonates, what doesn't, what feels aligned, what doesn't, and just sticking with the things that feel really aligned and and leaving, letting everything else go. It, it's like a whole new operating system, which is scary and freeing at the same time. I love that because uh, thank you for sharing that because that's my test right now. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I feel you. I, I have all the compassion in the world for that because that is a fucking hard test. It's challenging and uh, I'm seeing how my body has reacted and I'm like, ooh, I'm becoming aware of that pattern and I don't want to follow suit with those patterns because it's not in congruence with the, the me I'm here to share or to up level or to really like embark on like this mm -hmm. next version, the evolution of me, the evolution of my business. And again, it's part of a conditioning of the fear of, uh, you know, like, oh, if I don't do this, then everything's going to crumble and fall and I'm going to lose my followers and my Instagram, like all this bullshit, mediocre, like unimportant thing that we have put so much importance of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Exactly. So I want to dive in now because you talked about, you know, finishing your book. And I think like the fact that like this book, when you're talking about potent leadership comes out during this time, like you can't make this shit up. Yeah. Um, so I started writing, I started my book writing process in January of 2020 and in January and February, it was a, a lot of just like mapping out, visualizing, like, just like seeing where this wants to go, working with my book coach, March, literally March 1st is when I sat down and started writing the book. We took a trip to, um, my husband and I took a trip to Joshua tree, funny enough. And I was like, I'm going to kickstart my writing there. And I was focused on writing. He was focused on one of his projects. And I wrote like a good solid quarter of the book probably in Joshua Tree in a week and then the world shut down. And I continued to write, but I started to feel like a dissonance within myself with what was going on in the world and a misalignment with the book. And so I kept writing, I kept writing for a couple months and then things really got wacky in the world and my own matrix started crumbling and my own belief system started crumbling and um, because I had very different beliefs before this started and so I was going through my own disillusionment process and I did not want to write my book from that space because I mm -hmm. knew that there was a, a, a new evolution of me emerging that needed to be represented in this body of work so I paused the book the book was actually supposed to come out September 2020 and I paused writing. I told my book coach, I was like, I can't write right now. Like I need to process whatever is happening. And so it wasn't until September that I really started writing again. And I went back and rewrote a bunch of chapters and I just, there was a message in there that needed to be weaved in that was relevant to the times, but also not tied to the times, right? Cause books can't be tied to the times. And what does that message, mean to you? What does that mean to you? Relevant to the times, but not tied to the times. I'm just curious. And what yeah, that, relevant what that to the like. times. So like relevant to the underlying message for humanity that was emerging in 2020 and still emerging right now, yet not tied to, oh, because of this planned thing, because of this V, because of the big C. Um, and so I, I started deleting a bunch of stuff and and then rewriting it in a way where people understand what I'm talking about, but it also applies to things that are going to happen in the future because this shit's always going to happen. It's going to continue to unfold. But for me, I feel like potency is like my legacy work. Like if, if I were to really dilute down what I do with clients is like, I really help them reclaim their potency. And to me, potency is the medicine that you have to offer the world and yourself when you're being the full ex fullest expression of who you be. And, um, you know, as, as business owners and entrepreneurs, we've heard, we've all heard the question, like, what's your USP, what's your unique selling proposition? What makes you unique? And I have always hated that question because I believe that it's not just one thing that makes us unique, that we don't have just like one thing that makes us different, that that's not true what makes us unique is the totality of, of all that we are. And that's what I call potency. You know, it, it's, it's your energy, it's your frequency, it's your, it, it's your physical appearance, it's your tonality, it's your voice, it's your truth, it's, it's your values and your belief system. It's all of that. But in order to unleash that potency, you have to reclaim it. You have to understand what that is. And for so many years for the majority of your life, you've been taught to dismiss that you've been taught that it's wrong. It's bad. It's not enough. It's too much, whatever it is, whatever the story is. And so you've diluted yourself, you've watered yourself down. So this book takes you on a journey to really understand one, why you've been watering yourself down for so long, why you continue to wear masks, why you continue to perform, why you continue to pretend. And then it takes you on the journey of unraveling from that so you can understand who you truly are at the core of your being. And then from there, weave that potency into your work, into your leadership. So we no longer have like a, a bunch of cookie cutter leaders. So we have people who are leading from their own unique space with their own unique medicine, with their own sacred gifts, because that's what we need you know, and, and it's like the freedom that we're all chasing begins with giving ourselves the freedom to just be who we fucking are. So that's what the book is about. 
here for it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, and I think that, you know, so many of us, for instance, have been conditioned or we have not even conditioned, but like people have been taking the same, have read the same books. They've done the same courses. They're following the same people. But again, where is the, the individuality coming from where we can mm-hmm. take the wisdom, the medicine, the knowledge we've learned, take what resonates, release the rest. And from that, once we, again, going back full circle, integrate it and allow that to be in our resonance, <laughs> That is how we pave a path, a new path, implement change and share what's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's what um, humanity is really craving more than ever. So it takes courage to, again, get out of the comfort zone. It It takes courage to navigate through the cycles of life, death, uh, rebirth, dark night of the soul, it takes courage to give yourself permission to release the layers and shed what, what isn't in alignment with, mm-hmm. with the you, you're the next version of you, you are here to embody that you are here to, to show up into this world and radiate from that space. And again, I think that's the bigger message of what's happening, what's unfolding, Um, what we're recognizing, what we're calling in, and what will also be part of our new reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so beautifully said. So, And and, um, I just want to like honor you for being in all of that. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's been a journey. Like I said, I thought my book was done. And then this part, you know, is coming through. And I know I'm also in that process of Mm -hmm. going back, like I've have well over 90,000 words done, but I still haven't even even added what happened this summer yet Mm -hmm. to it. Um, And I'm I'm sure there'll be parts of me that will go back and rewrite or seeing where my head was in that space or, you know, and I think I was supposed to go to Bali to go write this book. Mm -hmm. And then I had 48 hours to get home before the whole world shut down. Yeah. I was the last flight out of Australia, the last international flight out of Australia. Insane. So that's where, again, we need to also honor the journey and trust the process. And again, surrender, knowing that like there is a greater plan unfolding. And a lot of us who have been the control freaks or, you know, we want things perfectly in a space. I'm a Virgo moon. So like, I, <laughs> I like my things the way that I, yeah. I know how I want my shit organized. It's why I help people with systems. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's part of like the unlearning I have to navigate through as well is like, yes, there is a point to have systems and organization and knowing like, how do we cultivate a, a balance with the divine flow plus our flow yeah and what's navigating through so mm-hmm. to wrap up i have a few lightning round questions i want to ask okay. can i remember them no just kidding <laughs> um, <laughs> what would you say to younger ruby mm. keep rising mm. i love that what would you say has been the book that has revolutionized your life? Uh, I hate questions about books. I, I want to say my own book just because writing that, <laughs> the journey of writing it was the most revolutionary <laughs> experience of my life. I love yeah. that. I love that. Where do you see yourself a year from now? Who the fuck knows? Um, How do I want to feel a year from now? Happy, connected, fulfilled. Um, Happy, connected, and fulfilled. Yeah. Way to be in that surrender and just trusting. What last little nugget of wisdom do you want to share to whoever is listening? When things start to feel too heavy, take a moment to zoom out 
take a moment to pause, to reflect, to slow down, to honor what it is that you need to remain in your sovereignty, to reconnect to your truth. Mm. And where can we find more of you? Mm. Well, you can find me on my website. It's a good place for all things, including the book. That's rubyframon.com. The book is called Potent Leadership, and you can get that on Amazon everywhere. I'll have a book bundle out on my website very soon. Um, you can also find me on social media at I am Ruby, as long as they don't censor me. Um, Instagram <laughs> is where I'm the most active. So you can find me there. And then my podcast, Potent Truth, on all podcast platforms. Thank you, Ruby, for going there with me. Thank you for being my first guest back from my hiatus. You know how much I love you and adore you and appreciate you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to continue to see this evolution, looking forward to continue to see your courage radiate through and you being unapologetically you. I think that is the definition of what it takes or that is the antithesis of what it means to be a potent leader and so i appreciate you serving and leading with integrity walking the talk in such a way that is you thank you thank you so so much for saying that thank you for for seeing me and you know sister i i love you i adore you um i am with you mm -hmm. in so many ways and I'm just really honored to be here. Thank you for sharing me with your community. Yes, thank you. I love you so much. And thank you again to everyone who's listening. Go check out Ruby and let us know how you're feeling, what, what came up for you. And we're going to be, you can check it out on the Sovereign Society's Instagram with, you'll see her little show notes. And I would love for you to just share like your nuggets that you got from this, because I know there's a lot that came through. So again, thank you, Ruby. And thank you everyone. And we'll be seeing more of you soon. Take care.